Glory be to God. Thank so God for today. Sure it's fine. It's fine. We thank God. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's going to be great today. I'm so excited. <laughs> so excited yeah oh hello just a moment please <laughs> yeah God bless you. Good evening, everyone. Good day to you all. Pleased to be here with you today. Pastor Jesse, God bless you. How was the service today? Jumbo, God bless you. Sister Remy, you are blessed. Sister Eniola, thank you for joining me today. I really appreciate you. My king is always on board. <laughs> It doesn't have choice. He's coming on board today. He's joining me because this issue will not be, it's not going to be only me. <laughs> I think it, it needs to be here so that we go practical and, um, you know, more interacting. It's a, it's a topic that I will need him beside me to be able to flow and function better. We give God all the glory. God has been so good. This is the 21st um edition of my married must work on um on this platform on facebook uh life and uh, i will bless god for for what the lord has done it was part of me <laughs> prefer my yeah. Yes, yeah i'm only there Thank you. yeah i feel better now Thank you. So today is going to be great because we are going to talk about that topic. Yeah, that hot topic that many people. Oh, Prince, you are welcome today. Yeah, I expect more men on on this plus platform today because this is really a a, a topic that men will be interested in, and I'm glad because uh, many homes have been you know destroyed for this reason, and that's why we need to really talk about it. This month is known as month of love, romance everywhere. You know, Valentine is being celebrated. Some have the knowledge of it. Some does not. Some don't even understand what it is. But we all celebrate love, so it's good. But some, <laughs> it's negative the way some people take it. Some, this is the time the devil will set trap for them. You know, to enter extramarital affairs that they might never be able to get out of it again you know uh some you know it's now that they will lose their virginity for the young ones coming up that someone somewhere is telling them i love you so much i'm going to marry you i'm going to do that and because of the fact that it's valentine you know they lose their virginity i just want us to quickly share now before we begin to discuss uh more intimate issues it's really important that we share now please share sister lola god bless you thank you we can't wait to meet you at the at the valentine extraordinary evening we can't wait to meet you and your husband thanks because we know that you are joining us happy sunday to you too so but for, for husband and wife it should be a reason valentine this season should be a reason to you know a season to dis rediscover each other and fall in love with each other again. So for everything you see people do out there, we should have reason for doing it. And if people are not getting the right reason, you should create, you know, the right reason for, for doing it. So I think, if not for anything, Valentine and this season should be a time to rediscover, you know, each other and love each other more. Let it be the time that you 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 find your relationship you know better so it's time that you rediscover the love you have for each other so it's very very important and this month we'll be talking about around sexual fulfillment in marriage so i will encourage you not to miss any of this um 
uh, any of this uh, section throughout the month. I'm particularly excited today because this is the month that my marriage must work started two years ago. <sighs> Hallelujah. The Lord spoke to me in 2012, just two months entering UK from Italy about my marriage must work and gave me that name, my marriage must work. I wrote it down and I was thinking, <laughs> I just moved into this country and I actually really wanted to rest. Many of us know the story, but for two years, I just opened the Facebook page, named it my marriage must work and went to do something else. But after two years, the Lord said to me, it's high time you start what I have called you to do in this country. And that explains the reason why I find it easy in, my, in the ministry because God just instructs me on what to do and I just follow. So February is two years anniversary. So if you are coming for the Valentine um, extraordinary evening, you are not only coming to, to celebrate each other, you are not only coming to enjoy yourself, you are also coming to celebrate with me and my husband as we mark the second anniversary of my marriage must work another another reason why i'm excited is um the couples club i i have this dream of having couples together uh, you know sharing together having that eagerness and uh, that passion to make our marriages you know work so and that that brings about the the, the my marriage must work couples club Apart from the normal seminar where couples will gather together and share, and it's going, we're going to launch Couples Club on that 25th of February. So we tell us more about it that day by the grace of God. So it's very, very, it's going to be very, very interesting. So anyone can join from any part of the world. Most important th thing is that we are working on our relationship. And the ultimate is my book. You know, my marriage must work. That book is going to go places. It's a book that will, in 50 years time, they will still be talking about that book. I know what I'm talking about because it's going to, it's going to be a book that will help schools, that will help marriage counselors. It's going to be a kind of book that is going to help married singles. And um, we are really working on it. Just be praying for us because it's going to be sure. one of its kind. Please, if you if you have a testimony, if you in two years you've been following my marriage must work and God has really blessed you with one thing or the other, maybe a, a message or you've been following us on Facebook Live, please send in your testimony. It's going to bless somebody. Please share the link if you have not. Thank you, Rhino Saint, for joining. We appreciate you. Don't mind my voice this evening please so please uh if this um if you want to join me you want to co-author with me in this book you believe in marriage you believe in a lasting marriage you believe in having good relationship and you you have a marriage ministry and you want to be part of this my marriage must work book project please contact me inbox me and i will tell you what you need to do but there are so many advantages of being co-author with my marriage must work there are so many advantages thank you very much so it's going to be great tonight i want us to go straight to another thing i want to say is someone asked me to send uh my account details for to support the ministry and i was just thinking maybe there are so many people out there or few people out there thinking of supporting but they don't know how please if you need the ministry account details just inbox me or send me a text and we'll send it to you on request. Thank you very much. So straight to the business today. I want my husband to be beside me when, by the time we start. We want to talk about S-E-X. Please, if you have your children with you today, just pardon me. Tell them to go to bed because we want to talk about something a bit, you know, more serious and children won't have to be around us. It's better, please. If you are watching with your children, let them go to bed. Thank you very much. I've sent mine. I've sent them to bed tonight. They don't have to be here. So I want my husband to be beside me. Welcome with me, my king. Woo! <laughs> please come around. Come around. Okay. Oh. Yeah. Good evening, everybody. 
I thank God I'm Igwe. And yes, so that's I'm my, a king. That's my Oga. We Oga give Oga God all the glory. Yes, so sex is something we are reluctant to talk about. Many of us are reluctant to talk about it. We are, we don't want to talk about it openly. Even in the church, as couples, many are, many are not bold to discuss it about sex openly or freely with our spouses. I wonder why. My hubby is so happy with this topic. Oh, I know, I know, I know. <laughs> men are happy with this topic. And I'm, I'm expecting more men on this platform tonight. I'm expecting more men on this platform tonight because... I need to talk to them. Oh, Mr. Tunde Amole from Nigeria, you are welcome. Just tag your friends right now and let all of them hear what we are about to discuss. So there is nothing shameful about it. Yes. There is no shame about it. Once you are married, you should be able to talk about this freely. Premarital sex is what brings shame and disgrace. Yeah. But sex within marriage, it's okay sex within marriage is ordained by god so if you are here you're listening to me you are single you don't have to go and practice all i'm going to say now until you get married Amen. possibly it will make you to feel like you know getting married tonight but that shouldn't make you go and do what you're not supposed to do before the and right before the right time and if you're married you 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 listen to me today and you're thinking oh i've been missing you need to handle it wisely. Don't, because of that, begin to attack your husband or begin to attack your wife. All you need to do is both of you should sit down and just practice what you have learned. Amen. learned. So that is it. There is no room for criticism or attack. We are only working together to make our marriages work you know, better and work as God intended it. So I said there is nothing shameful Thank you, Stayemi Lawal. Thank you for joining. Thank you, Jimadu. Oh, thank you. Thank Please you be helping me. Thank you. For <laughs> I want us From to move Ukraine. fast. Yeah, yeah thank nice you. Pastor, Mrs. God bless you. Thanks for joining us. So, I believe God designed sex between husband and wife, you know, married to each other for the rest of their life. So, if you are looking at what you share with your partner that no other person should, sex and love making should be the, 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 the one. So, it's God that has created it. Every part of the body has its function. Yeah. We have eyes, we have nose, we have mouth for a reason. You you hit with your mouth, you 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 see with your eyes, you hear with your ears. So God who has created us in his own image, he, he did not make mistake when he created the physical productive organs. So he created it not only for or Ross having pro, uh, yeah for procreation also for pleasure Amen. so procreation wouldn't have been possible even if we, without the two wonderful instrument that God has created so tools yes tools or instrument call it anything mm. so thou has the Bible says in Revelation four eleven thou has created all things and for thy pleasure, pleasure yeah. they are and were created. And um, this, this popular uh, uh, Bible verse that we all read in Proverbs, if you go to Proverbs chapter 5, verse 15 to 19, mm -hmm. drink water from your own well. Yeah, I'm, I'm using a national, um, uh, international version also. Like, I think that's what I'm using now. Okay. Yes, drink water from your own well, share your love with only your wife. Listen to me, man, if you are on this platform. Why spill the water of your own springs in the streets, mm. having sex with just anyone? God forbid. <laughs> God forbid. <laughs> you should reserve it for yourselves, Amen. for both of you. Never share it with strangers. Are you listening? Mm. Rejoice. Never share it with strangers. Let your wife be a fountain of blessing for you. Rejoice in the wife of your youth. She is a loving dear, a graceful doe. Let her breasts. I, I feel like saying somebody repeat after me. <laughs> I will repeat after you. 
<laughs> Let her breast satisfy you always. May you always be captivated by her love. Amen. I have some questions from my husband by the end of, maybe towards the end. He's going to answer you. But before then, please share. Yes, please share, share the link. It's so important. When you share it, it's also saved on your page so that you can refer to it anytime. Sex is not on, you know, it's not on, um, holy. unholy. Yeah. So why feel guilty about talking, you know, talking about it? Why do we feel guilty? Why do we feel bad? It does not stop God from answering your prayers. Mm. It doesn't stop you from, you know, from being uh, spiritual. It doesn't hinder you from it. So most of the time it's our, or bringing the negative attitude, carelessness, wrong belief about sex that has destroyed many you know marriages out there mm. many sister pamela thank you for joining many marriages out there are having issues of uh, sex as a major problem but it does not show quickly and when you are seeing them going through a lot of problem when you are talking about those problem i tell you the bottom line of the whole thing is the sex lack of sex if you look at it mm. but before you can get to that you must have really really cancelled and asked a lot of questions yes wrong so it mm. wrong teaching is also part of That's it true. cultural belief yeah religion imagine there are so many things that we have really really in in africa you know women i, I remember 2006 when i went to nigeria I stayed with, I put up with my younger sister and, you know, she was having fellowship with um, the church members, you know, the women in the church and I was opportune to speak with them. When I was talking about sex, you know what they told me? They said, ah, it's because you are coming from Europe. We can't make the move. We can't even, <laughs> we dare not make the move that uh, we my are. My husband, we, I need it. <laughs> I said, what are you telling me? So it shows that some marriages, some women out there, they are still really struggling in this area. So it's only everything look as if it's the man. It's the man that really needs sex. Yeah. The woman does not have, have that need. So cultural belief is really, really affecting sex and marriage. So many wrong approaches to sex, which has robbed us of its enjoyment. Mm. And I think it's time for us to enjoy our home. It's time for us to enjoy our marriage. It's time for us, for you to enjoy your husband. I am enjoying my, my, mine to the fullest. Yes. Though to him, it's not yet, we are not yet there, but for me, I'm okay. I, I am really okay. We, but we can, we can do better. We can do better. Okay, that's fine. We can do better. So many wives are bruised by their husband because they dare not talk that I'm not enjoying it. I, I'm, I'm having pain. Some women cry after, after sex. Some cry a lot because the man has actually come, not no uh, foreplay, nothing. He just you know just do it. And at the end of the day, the woman is crying. Yeah, I even learned that there are some culture where the the if the woman has not cried, the man has not enjoyed it. You know, some okay. some people. They, they 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 if the woman does not cry. It the means man, she has not yet enjoyed so, it. To some people, crying is enjoyment. Which to is some bad. Women. It's a wrong thing. Okay. So many wives are bruised. They are not happy. They are wounded. And they dare not talk that they are not enjoying it. So to such a wife, sex is pain. Mm. She does not understand any other thing than sex is pain. So when the man is coming, the woman is crying. Wow. You know? Oh, this man has come again. That's it's so painful. I feel so sad for such women mm -hmm. who are still in that position. You have got permission to enjoy sex within your marriage. Mm -hmm. Woman, you have, what am I saying? You have God's permission. Mm -hmm. So if you have not been enjoying it, I just pray that by the end of this uh, teaching on marriage, God mm -hmm. will give you the grace Amen. and the wisdom to talk to your husband yeah. and you know, iron things out so that you can enjoy your marriage to the fullest. Amen. Make your sexual relationship a fulfilling experience God meant it to be. Amen. I wonder one day, you know, Sarah at that age getting pregnant. Do you know what that means? It's not Holy Ghost um, conception like Amen. Mary. 
Maybe we don't know. Maybe we thought God just put that pregnancy there just the same way that the Holy Ghost came upon Mary. Up, upon Mary. No. That shows that even at that old age, that man is still going there. That man <laughs> is still touching that woman. Because it's meant it was, it was true sexual intercourse that the, uh, Sarah got pregnant. Yeah. Even at that old age. So it is God's will for us to have wonderful sexual experience till our old age. Amen. So the truth about sex is that God ordained it. God designed it to bring mutual pleasure in marriage. Amen. Now ask me, in most marriages, only the men, only the husbands are enjoying the sex. They don't understand that the woman or the wife they marry they are not really enjoying it and they don't care some don't know it's ignorance and i know those who don't know by the end of today maybe they will know and they will be more cautious and you know put their wife into consideration but some who who are aware and still don't do anything about it i pray that god almighty will touch their hearts today amen so to be sexually fulfilled in marriage you must learn to communicate openly that's one of the basic lack of communication Communication is a problem, is a big issue. Even in the heart, myself and my husband will communicate. We talk. So it starts from, you know, both of you being intimate mm. from the day, from, from daytime. Not only that the man will just come, he feels like he just come on you and just, you know, calm down. No, that's not. To a man, maybe he's okay. But to a woman, that is not sex. So your spouse has to know how you feel. When, when do you desire it, you know? So it needs, you need to, it needs to understand your own makeup. So couples can get, gain sexual oneness without open communication yeah. about sex matters. And uh, there's true. one question. Can I have that? So uh, I, you, you need to, both of you need to ask yourself some questions. If you are, by now you are married and you never sit with your spouse, mm -hmm. You never sit with your spouse to talk about, you know, sex openly. I think you need to find time to do it. You need to do it. You know why you need to do it? Because it helps you in your, in your relationship. So you need to ask questions like this. What can I do to make sex more enjoyable to you or for you? A woman can ask. Or a, a anyone any of them can, any can, of ask, them this can ask this question. Ask because... It shows that you want to do more. Yeah. You want to really learn. You want to be sure that I am putting my best. So are you getting me? So yeah. ask your partner, what can I do to make you, you know, enjoy sex with me as your partner yeah. or as your spouse? Yeah. Ask. Don't be ashamed because you are married. So you need to ask. When you ask, then you'll be able to know that the area he or she needs help. Yeah. Maybe you think you've been giving your best, yeah. whereas the man or the woman is not really getting it or enjoying it the way he should do. So you ask, what is there anything that makes you uncomfortable? Yeah. So if you ask a, a woman or a man during the heart or during our sexual experiences, yeah. is there anything that makes you uncomfortable? I tell you, most of the new things people are introducing into sex now, their partners are uncomfortable, mm -hmm. and they still go ahead. Hmm. Both of you are supposed to agree on whatever you are doing, and you should be pleased because it's supposed to be that both of you enjoy it, not that one person is enjoying it and the other is not. So, if if you you ask another question if how do you want me to tell you what i want how do you want me to tell you so if you 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 ask how you want it expressed so the man needs to know or the woman needs to know all these questions i'm just saying it that <laughs> i'm saying it so that you know how to but i believe that things are getting better amen and men are learning more. The only problem or the danger I, I see in learning more than I say is that when they are learning, they are learning wrong things fast. Because if you go and Google about all these things, there are so many wrong things people are yeah. just taking. Pornography is out of it. 
You don't you don't say because you want to improve on on sexual relationship with your partner. You just go begin to watch pornography. I don't support it. There are so many Christian uh, books and so many Christian sites you can go that you can learn on how to increase you know your sexual relationship. So how often do you want us to have sex? Mm. Maybe you are having it once in three months and your partner is boiling. That simple question, ask her. How, how how often do you want it if the for example if the wife says okay i want it once a week and you are you think you've been doing exceedingly well very fantastic by doing once a month that shows once that the month is small <laughs> <laughs> supposed to just once wait. a month is like you're not doing anything anything okay mm. then you need to ask what do i do to get you ready yeah i believe a man should ask the woman more because men are always ready. Anyway, <laughs> if I lie, tell me. Men are no, always ready. Lying. Men are always ready most of the time. But yeah. in this case, ask your wife, what do I do to prepare you to make you ready? Because when a woman is actually ready for sex, they will enjoy it and you also will enjoy it. So you need to ask that question. Maybe yeah, you have this not. is very true because many men don't even know where to touch in their wife's body. That we pay, I mean, that we stimulate her. If you ask many some men, they don't even know what turns their wife on. on. Amen. Men, most men, when, when they see some part of the body, <laughs> they are, they are ready. <laughs> <laughs> they are ready. So, please, couples should once, read. Even once a week is too small. You know, I said it before. Please, uh, uh, <laughs> Pastor and Kiru, you are you are wonderful. You are wonderful. You see, we cannot. You can't just hide it. Yeah. Once you are intimate with your partner, yeah. Both spiritually, you are you are you know physically attracted to them. Mm. In your prayer life is vibrant. You are always together. You pray together. There is no way you will not be attracted to each other almost every day. Yeah. In that at that point, you don't you don't count it anymore. Yeah. I was counseling a lady one day. She was saying. How can my husband be asking for this every time? I said, do you know what? Do you take con contraceptives? She said, yes. I said, how do you take it? She said, I put it beside my bed and I take it every day. I said, do you know what? Can't your husband just assume he's that contra That is, any time he needs it, you give it to him. Because you don't have a choice. She said, what? Yeah. He said, huh? What are you talking about? I said, yes. That's what I'm talking about. Because I believe if God has given you that man, he has given you the, the appetite. Grace. He has given you mm. the grace to meet the man's appetite. Mm. So that is it. I'm coming back to the frequent, you know, frequency because someone said it once a week is too small. So survey shows that 60 percent of women fake orgasm. Mm. Why? Because they want the men to do what they want to do and go. Because in the first place, they are not enjoying it, and they can't even talk. Especially from back where we are coming from, the Western world, where we are in Europe, we are able to talk. My husband, if he doesn't do it well, I will tell him, oh, don't look by this time around. <laughs> you have to do repeat. <laughs> he will even tell you, I will, if you fail, you repeat class. Yes, I will repeat, I will the, repeat with joy. So, you, you know, that intimacy is there. We talk a lot and it has really helped our relationship. So you don't need to fake it. What you need to do is... Try as much as possible to communicate with your husband. And that is the reason why I'm bringing up Couples Club. Because I discovered that when you come to a seminar, what I discuss with women, most of the time, they don't, some of them do, cannot even discuss with their husband the same way I communicate, you know, communicated it with them. So if the man and the woman are listening to me now, any couple listening to me now will gain more than you going home and telling the man that ah, I listened to one message today. This is what they asked us to do. And that is the brain behind Couples Club. We are together. We are, you know, joining the club because we both want to work together to make our marriages work. So sex is not just um, intercourse. It's what a lot of men always think is just come and go. No, some men satisfy their sexual urge without satisfying their wives forgetting that she has feelings too yeah so what do you what why would you think it's only about you yeah. it's not just about you that woman also needs sexual fulfillment in her marriage mm. she also needs it so 
you should know that sex is supposed to be something that you both experience together. Your wife is not a sex toy. She is a person. And she has feelings too. I wish I can say repeat it every <laughs> month. So don't be selfish. Don't be selfish. A lot goes into fulfilling, a, 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 fulfilling sex and marriage. You have to touch her during the day. You have to kiss her for a woman. Yeah. If you are always ready when you enter bed, for a woman it's not like that. You need to, things that go on during the day, you know, the way you call her, the way you touch her, the way you massage her. And I want to massage, please. Mm. All those things. I'm always ready to do this kind of work. <laughs> All those, you know, lately I, dis I, I, I discovered one method. My back is always scratching mm. me. I always uh, my back. When I, when David was small, my son, I call him later one day. My husband said, "Why do you call your son to scratch your back for you?" When I'm here. When when is there? I have a back scratcher, but I don't use it. I tell my husband to mm. scratch my back for me because I discovered <laughs> that is is something that brings us you know closer together. I enjoy it too because it's a good work. It's like it's a kind I like of... that kind of work. <laughs> <laughs> but please answer this question: Should women make the first move? Okay, Just now, I said before that culture has actually spoiled so many things for us. But if you are married and the Bible has told us that we have now become one and both of us, we lie, we are no more ashamed. Yeah. I don't feel there's anything bad for you to make the first move. If you feel like, is your husband, for God's sake. Mm. If you feel like doing it, tell your husband, darling, I will, in fact, we have a way of communicating in our house anyway. So there is nothing like, uh, and there are some things we need to know about uh, sexual fulfillment in marriage. Sometimes it's, it's the sacrifice, it's sacrificial. So you don't have to be ready every time to meet your spouse needs. Mm -hmm. If he wants it so badly and you are not in the mood, you should still go ahead and help him out. Yeah. We have different methods, we have different styles. When I am not in the mood, there is a way he does it. <laughs> Please don't talk yet. <laughs> no, not to don't talk. talk yet. You see why? Because he has started since last week. He wanted to bust last week. I said, don't worry. This week, this area, you're going to talk. So, my sister, if your husband is understanding and he's not part of, he's not from part of that world where they say if you try it, you you are you are you are promiscuous uh, yeah, or you cause are uh, promiscuous or you are you don't uh, spoil. Yeah, 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 don't spoil. <laughs> so don't let you. It's good if you have that relationship because I believe it's there's nothing bad in it, but many women still hold, don't have the courage to do that. Now, movies say uh, you can touch him, you can kiss him, you can hold him, you can use a leg to touch him. You understand? There is a way to or come, say it. Say it if you say need it. to say it. Or if you, but there should be a way that you make the move and the man will understand that you actually need them. Is very very important. I want to see where I am now. You know, uh, there is one survey that says that up till about nineteen oh yes nineteen oh most women never reached orgasm till they die. Most women up till about one and twenty years ago, part in, uh, in West African because what they what they understood is that they they should not even talk. Mm. They are married. For their to satisfy their husband and yeah. have children, so they never, you know, reach climax or reach orgasm. That's so sad. It's not that far from now. So that means, even as I'm talking, some women are in their marriage, but they are not enjoying it the way they should because the men are not patient enough or they are selfish to think that the woman does not have that need. So some some men satisfy their sexual urge without satisfying their wives, mm. forgetting that she has feelings too and she has that need. Sex is supposed to be something we experience together. Your wife is not a story. I've talked about that. Most women accuse their husband of not being romantic. Mm. Because romance is... Sex starts from romance for a woman. So when you begin to kiss her gently in the public, you hold her hands, you know, you, you tell her you love her, Sex has started. Yeah. That time during the day when you text her, you call and ask where she, where she is, what what is going on with her. Sex has actually started. Yeah. 
Yeah. You tell her she's beautiful. Your hair is fine. When did you make your hair? You've you've already you've already <laughs> you know sex has started. So and do you know what I always tell men? If you do all this, you during know the during the day to your wife, it's an investment. Yes. You don't know why. By the time you make love, it's far different from the one you do when you don't do all this. Yeah. Because to you have prepared the woman by that doing that. So sexual intimacy is like I said it's like the tip of the iceberg. So when you focus on the emotional, yeah. the intellectual and spiritual aspect, then sexual intimacy picks up automatically. Good. So when you are talking about having good sex with a woman, then you should be involved in her life. Yeah. You should get close to her, know what she's going through, care for her. You can't just come you can't just come and just say assist in the house and and also assist in the house you know yeah. and uh, it it goes a long way so when a couple is emotionally intimate they both share personal feelings and display affection without any reservation that's true my husband he does it so much in mm. fact when we go to um, work we we work together once or twice many years back yeah the 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 the, the, boss. the boss almost sacked my husband because he will always come to where I am and he will be telling the whole uh, company this is my wife they say we know she's your wife what is all this he's always doing that he's always around me he's always touching me he's always he's proud of being you know he calls me every time and that is that makes me to go to bed every time ready amen <laughs> oh my god I go to bed. Even when he does not ask for it, I just make sure before I go to bed, I tidy up, I shower, I use my roll-on, I use, I have a perfume beside me, you know, beside my table that I use for the night, you know, that I smell good, I'm ready for him. If he asks for it, fine. If he doesn't, but I just go to bed prepared because during the day, he has done so much. So he has invested in me, so much in me that I, I will feel bad. To say no to this man. Mm, I need reward to be rewarded. So I'm telling, I'm giving some men tips now. Mm. So be involved in a woman's life for, for, for you to have the best of that woman in bed. Not just to go and... Another thing is, when you are, before you go to the heart, what do you do? Yeah. There is something called foreplay that we all know. You know, it's in, foreplay is, it begins with kissing, fondling undressing her, petting her, and some people, you know, they just do mm, on the wedding day, and that's all. No. The same way you kiss when you're newly married, you're supposed to continue. My husband will tell you, why will you remove that from my menu? <laughs> <laughs> you don't shut my ration. Mm. You know, I'm telling you how practical, you know, what has brought this intimacy. Mm. So, now, Removing kissing from his uh, menu, menu, is, menu is not acceptable. No. So you see some of these things, they, they actually help in, in enjoying sex. So make in, when you have all this touching her, caressing her, massaging her, and all that, before the time, it makes you sexually aroused, especially women that makes, and it makes it enjoyable. That's true. If, if I should ask my husband for a, a, a lubricant, know that he has not done his job properly, perfectly, a, perfectly mm. in foreplay. Mm. Because if you really do your job, I don't need any lubricant. Mm. I should be wet and be ready. Yeah. Please, I'm still anointed. I'm, I'm anointed. No. I'm an apostle. <laughs> because so, so I'm people, people are in Nigeria, looking, we say, ah. Uh, some, some people will be looking at me and say, is this the same woman that prayed? Uh, and they are anointed. That prayed and God answered, or that prophesied and it came to pass. It's still the same woman. Yeah. I'm just telling us the fact that this area is been neglected and many homes have been broken. Yeah. Many marriages have started. And the, the thing is, some people... The, some men we go and do it outside with people who are raw with them, and they get and get them and do as if they are holy, which is can no you good. can you hear that? I want to quickly go to. I I wish to talk more about this foreplay. Let me yeah. just talk about foreplay. Mentally arouses and prepare a woman, makes you discover your spouse hot spot. So, if you 
have the foreplay, you know, you don't rush into you don't rush into sex or love making. You need to play with each other. By doing that, you discover where you need to touch. So next time, instead of spending fifteen minutes for that, you already know where to go. Uh, you know where you say, amen. <laughs> you know where you, you just know where to go that will prepare her ready. So it makes you know what your spouse likes and uh, you are able to satisfy him or her. Yeah. So foreplay helps man to get an erection and help the wife also to become properly lubricated. Yeah. So naturally. that's naturally, properly and naturally lubricated without yeah. looking for any extra lubricant. So his are massage her all over, fondula, stare mm. at her face. My husband can look at me. Sometimes my children will say, daddy. Hey, daddy. He say, what is it now? What are you? Why are you talking? So all those things, all those things it does actually prepare me in the night. And it's, a, it's really a good secret that you need to know. Now, I have some questions for Apostle. Why I wanted to bring a couple today, here today, but they are very busy. And I'm thinking we can do this because we are very, very, we mm. talk about it. We are free. We talk about sex openly to each other. And we need to grow to that level whereby we sit down and discuss. Are you okay? Yeah, I'm okay. If I'm, if I'm, if I'm not satisfied, anytime we make love, my husband is not going to, is not going anywhere. He needs to satisfy me. So we have a code, we have a word, <laughs> we have a way of saying, "Are you okay?" When I say yes, uh -huh, that is when he can reach his own climax. So you see, that's a man that consider the wife. You know. Before he's not that just there is communication some, during the even act. during the act we communicate. Mm. So apostle, yeah, I've told people that we are still anointed Amen. as we are, even though we are discussing this. I want you to, um, I want you to answer these questions okay. honestly. Now, don't say because uh, it's your wife asking you or interviewing you. How do you, uh, what do you say about those who say that they are not sexually attracted to their spouse anymore? Okay. You know, they are with their spouse, but they don't, they're not physically attracted. They don't feel like touching the woman. Mm -hmm. They don't feel like having sex and they are to be living together as husband and wife. What do you think happens? Yeah, I would say that uh, it's just a feeling. You just feel it's not, you are not attracted to him or her anymore. It's a feeling. If people can even fall in love with a picture on Facebook <laughs> that is not real, they will, they will have sleepless night for something that is not there. <laughs> and they will keep they, the law will keep growing for something that is not real. How how much more somebody that is beside you that is real? It shows that I mean this kind of love is like a seed. If you nurture it, it will grow. grow. You can be attracted to your spouse if you decide to give your 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 spouse attention, time for the love to grow. It can happen. Thank you. I want to have this. If you. A sexless marriage mm. is an unhealthy marriage. Mm. But it's... Even, this, even the, too little sex. Yes. It, uh, um, not having or not being attracted to your wife is a symptom. Mm. The, the, not having the sex is not even the problem now. The problem is what made you not to feel attracted to him or her. Yeah. So if we're able to identify... What what happened? What suddenly made you just lose appetite or lose um, interest in your partner? If you are able to trace that, it then can be corrected. Exactly, we will be able to solve the Renew problem. Renew your mind. So if we are fighting over, if you are attacking your partner, why you are not touching me? This that this, a deep, there is a deeper problem. Yes. That's just a symptom. There is something deeper that we need to find out. So he has answered that. Now I want to ask this direct question. Yeah. How sexually attractive are you to your wife? Or is your wife to you? I don't know how to ask that. So how is your sexual sex life? Let me just Okay, ask, my sex that. life. Well, uh, we, I, I, I won't say I, we have a vibrant sex life. We, I won't tell you how many times we do it, but we do it often. Since we gave our, uh, we became married so you wanted to that, give her life to christ it's, it's this, so this, spiritual but this area is also married, except when she is in a monthly period there is no week that we don't i would say minimum of two times is always three times upward upward you see that Every god has week. given me except the time she went to god Nigeria. has given me grace 
So enough grace. Amen. <laughs> even if we do less than three, we start I mean something is wrong. You understand? You'll be asking. It, so we enjoy sex I mean vibrant sex life. Uh it brings us closer. Yeah. We it's, don't it's, have issues, we don't fight. We have issue and we resolve it. Let me tell you a secret. <laughs> people know this, especially people in Italy, our members. They say, I always tell them, my husband does not fight me in the evening. It doesn't. If we have a misunderstanding during the day, early in the day, maybe around 11, we might argue, you know, it might be so hot, we argue. And, but the same incident or the same thing, if it happens around 7 p.m., my husband will be calm. You know, Why? Because he does not want anything to spoil his evening, his <laughs> night. He just wanted that night, you know. And he's thinking, if I flare up now, or I get angry with this woman, she will be affected emotionally. That is a man that understands perfectly, you know, the, how you know, women, you know, function. How uh, the body of women and the, our, the way we are emotional beings. So yeah. he does not want me to be affected because when I'm down, he, he, there is no way. <laughs> if I even allow him, he knows that that is not the best. So yeah. if he has, you know, that kind of, um, okay, just do it because I want you to do it. If he has that one three times, my husband will tell me, dear, please, I need your full attention this time around. Amen. So that is it. it, it it's uh, communication. We, is, we are very, very okay. And we really desire that every home have, you know, vibrant sexual uh, relationship it's exactly. very very important how come you still look forward to making love with your wife after 15 years of marriage yeah my wife today is sexier than when we first married what do you mean she she's she's pretty when we marry but i would say 15 years after she's sexier ah, ah. hey apostle <laughs> do you, you know, <laughs> i don't know what because you are sexier now please, please, than, than, then. than then yeah i just wonder uh some women, when they go out, they package everything, you know, they pack and expose their body for men out there to see. Mm. Those things are things you should actually do in your house to attract your husband. That's true. So you are doing the opposite. What, who are you packaging for out there that you expose all your body? The man in the house that you need to expose your body to. You keep you you just you are just reckless in the house and you are careless in the house. But when you want to go out, you put your best and you package everything, push everything out for who? Go and push it out for the Now I want to say this house. also. Most people in the house, most couple, they don't have body contact in the house. Maybe there is a small of your door Passage, you, you want, want to, to pass. One you, will have to wait, one for, the will wait for the other. Instead of you to <laughs> You know, jam each jam other, each other <laughs> hold each other, and squeeze, you know. Do you know, me, me, most times my children, you know, catch my husband doing one thing or the other. Is that our times I say, oh, well, <laughs> these children are looking at you. Because in the house, we always have body contact. He, he's always touching me. He runs. I Not that I expose, my children are grown, you know, now. They are, teen, mm. they are becoming teenagers, so I don't expose my body. All around the house like before but when they were small. Room. But I, in the other room. <laughs> in the other room, I can't do anything. Sometimes when my children, when they are sleeping, I when I'm changing to my pajamas, I, I, you know, after cleaning up and everything, I will be looking for what is not lost without wearing anything. Also, I say, you know what you are doing. You know, I know you know what you are doing. These things are very important. You need to mm. invest in your marriage. Amen. You need to be conscious of all these little little things. So. He is still running after me in the house. He does not even give me a chance to say I want it because when you have enough of a thing, then when do you want to even say or make the move that you, I want it, darling? Amen. Maybe one, maybe, yeah, maybe, I, still I, <laughs> maybe I have done that less than 10, 10 times in my 15 years of marriage because he is always attracted to me and he wants me every time. If your husband wants you, you know, always, it's not a bad thing. It's a good thing. It's not, if he's attracted to you, it's not a bad thing. You need to just pray for the grace and meet the needs of your husband. Amen. And if you are not enjoying, that's why you run. Maybe Something it, is a talk thing. to me. Yeah, I will tell you what or cancel your husband so that you will. Because most men, their wife run away from them because they are not enjoying it. Yeah. So instead of bruising the woman every time, learn go and find out what to do to make your wife to be running after you. Okay. We are we are beginning to run round up now. I have a 
I have a question, but it's like you've answered it. I don't want you to go back to it. Do you believe in foreplay and do you do it? You do more than enough. Don't, I do. Don't <laughs> even talk about I it. I do. <laughs> so, uh, uh, as you uh, active, okay, okay, as your active sexual life with your wife reduce your anointing. <laughs> I ask that because some yeah. some of us ministers, we we deceive ourselves a lot and um, we lose because you know what. Devil does not respect anointing when it comes to marriage. Mm. You can be a bishop and miss your marriage yeah. just for, for carelessness. Because God has called you, is aware that you have a family to take care of. So you don't say because you are so much anointed and you need to go fly from every fly from one place to the mm. other and neglect the need of your wife. Yeah. If your wife is born in every time and crying because you have a ministry, then there is a problem. So now, you see the way we are doing. I tell you, my husband is highly anointed. Highly, he might not come out every time or talk like me, that can, you know, but he's highly anointed. If he tells you something, it's just that way. So now, as this vibrant sex life affect, uh, affected your, your anointing in any way? I believe it, it, it boosts the anointing rather. <laughs> Yeah, when we first married, I think my wife was uh, feeling that uh, the more the sex, maybe it affects the anointing, but we have overcome that. I want to tell you that it doesn't do oh, it anything is. negative to the anointing. It's a blessing for you when your husband desires you, when your wife desires it, you. You understand? God is even pleased, rather, with both of you being more intimate, I mean, becoming one even in the sexual aspect of it. So instead of saying it reduces the anointing, I would say active sexual life increases the anointing. With your they, where most people have problem is some women will say, God told me to fast for 40 days. <laughs> you understand? Okay, the guy managed 40 days. You come down from the mountain, you are saying, God still say you should go another seven days. <laughs> you should know that. <laughs> <laughs> it is well. it, can it can reduce the anointing that way. Oh, and you Amen. might even lose the relationship, relationship if you're not careful. Amen. Thank you very much. I think today we are what's the time now? I want to be sure yeah. we are not, I just I don't want us to be more than what one hour. Questions on that? Please, I want us to now put in our questions. If we cannot answer today, from next uh, Sunday we'll answer more questions. If you have any question for us directly day. or you just want to ask anything. All the places, the churches that have invited me to minister, most of the questions they write in the paper, you know, for me to answer, they are on sex. 90% of questions asked wherever I preach as a marriage minister is on sex. Mm -hmm. So for you to know that it's a big issue in the world and even in the body of Christ, okay. don't let us pretend at all. It's a big issue. So I am ready... <laughs> To and this area is an area that God has given me the grace by experience, to you. <laughs> and um, I am ready to answer Rose. Somebody put something there. He said uh, that's Mr. Olubenga Israel Awa. Okay. He said, please let's talk about sex later. When more Nigerians must have eaten enough, most people will die on bed as soon as they continue <laughs> having sex without enough food in their belly. Then we are ready to. To open a year for that, let rice and other food. <laughs> I think that's a joke anyway. <laughs> uh, it, what you are saying, Mr. What's his name? Mr. Uh, Olubenga. It, it's trying to say you need stamina. Stamina, yeah. yeah, it's true. You need stamina. But you know what we are learning now? For you in your marriage, you might not make use of it now, but you have the knowledge already. Mm. But it's good because knowledge is power. We just dedicate this month for this talk. Yeah. So you can always go back to this video when you eat and you are you are <laughs> satisfied. Amen. But let's share it. Let's talk about it. And uh, I believe the Lord will touch Nigeria. Amen. God Almighty will restore things in our country. But remember that many marriages are also, you know, um, having many marriages are having challenges in this area. Yeah. And we just need to talk about it. Some are being too holy. Some are secretive about it mm -hmm. and uh, they need help. They're not talking knowledge. next week by the grace of God. We'll talk more about how we need to help each other because sometimes some men are going through some things in their marriage and they are not able to open up to their spouse. Yeah. Maybe uh, they are not having erection or 
the the, the wife is not the libido is, is not low. there what are the likely causes of that and what do they do we are going to talk about that with other questions that you have today, today that, we, that we are not able to answer uh i pray that by the end of this series god would have touched us in this area and all of us would you know adjust and increase in our sexual intimacy with our partners and yeah you can name. come with your spouse also to our our meeting okay we, the we, valentine we, yes program. we have um valentine they can spark up something something yeah it's you know it's uh, it's amazing when people think about such program and they think ah, it's expensive i just imagine you know because i know how much we all spend on things that are not really that important so mm. when someone has gone to make it a, a special place for us to meet and learn and enjoy one another. I, in fact, I recommend this uh, Valentine. I recommend this Valentine for most of my pastor friends. Last year, many of them came five hours with your 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 wife alone without any interruption. Yeah. It's it's an investment in your yeah. relationship, and you're going to meet meet other other wonderful couples as well. It's and contagious. some some singles that are asking me, you know, where can they meet? you know, uh, marriageable singles. You come, other singles will be there. We have some singles that are coming. You don't know anything can happen. Yeah. And one thing I want to tell you is that any meeting I arrange or I organize, there is anointing of God backing it up because I know God has called me into this. So there is always a confirmation. So if you come that day, something has to happen. Amen. In your marriage, in connecting you with your partner, something just has to happen. Thank Amen. you very much today for you. enjoying with us, you know, on this topic. Next Sunday, by the grace of and God, we altar. are coming with altar, altar, uh, you know, message on this same issue, sex. Thank you very much. God have, bless a you. have a wonderful. Love you. <laughs> Amen. Thank you. God bless you.